as well as processing and perceiving the world around us. The brain holds all of our experiences as memories. And just like a vast vault filled with the clutter of our lives, memory has the potential to store information for a lifetime. Memory is maybe the fundamental surviving mechanism that an organism has. Memory represents the possibility of going back to the past to interpret the present and then plan the future. And without that, we are really a little bit at a loss in life. But consider what your life might be like if you could actually remember everything you'd ever experienced. Meet Sean Conlon. December 23rd, 1995 was a Saturday. And I was over at a friend's house in Bayville, New York. And I was getting ready to go up to my aunt's house where we'd gone every year for Christmas. June 24th, 2002 was a Monday. And I was here in Annapolis. It was a very hot day. I had a girl that I liked at uh, one of the local restaurants. And I made the mistake of asking her out at the bar and her saying no. Sean has an incredible and rare condition called hypersuperior autobiographical memory. It means he can remember everything that's happened to him for the last 30 years. Sean's brain hoards the clutter of his life, as well as cherished memories. He's unable to forget a thing and goes through each day with his memories spooling around him, as if part of his brain is spinning through an eternal DVD. People who have superior autobiographical memory are people who, differently from us, they're able to remember almost every day of their life. And they're able to access this information very quickly, very easily, almost automatically. It tells us that maybe, you know, this idea that we had up until now that memory is basically redefining itself constantly, you know, deleting, adding, modifying, modulating on the basis of uh, my current information, my current knowledge, my current mood, my current emotions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Maybe not, it's not true. Only 20 people in the United States have been diagnosed with this extraordinary condition. Curiously, their memories often home in on one particular aspect of any day, the weather. I've always been a uh, weather fanatic. Friday, February 11th, 1983, a nor'easter came out of the Gulf and uh, walloped DC, Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York with uh, almost three feet of snow. Saturday, March 13th, 1993, who was dubbed the blizzard or the storm of the century, where it snowed heavily all the way up the northeastern corridor, got buried in almost two feet of snow. It is a very, very atypical way of remembering. We typically encode personal information by saliency. Oh, this is important for me. Oh, that makes me angry. Oh, you know, finally I found something, et cetera, et cetera. And, and dates are completely secondary. As far as my memory is concerned, I do not understand how or why it works. But the way that Sean remembers could give a real insight into how all of our memory works. Learning more about this condition has the potential of revolutionizing the way we understand memory. Let's assume there are people who are like us, just at the very end of a continuum. It means that the, the way their memory functions is actually more similar to the way our memory functions than we think now. But however useful Sean's memory is to science, actually living with it can be a curse. It has uh, affected my love life, uh, which is non-existent 
I've had um, a lot of bad luck with women in my earlier years, and any time, any prospect of meeting a new woman, those past failures come back like they're yesterday. Sean's life and his perception of the world is scrambled because he's constantly haunted by memories and the emotions they provoke. 